All right, guys, it's Jernigan here. I'm watching a very interesting video on YouTube about Boris Johnson having his dreams of building a bridge to England to France. That's his wish he wanted to do. He thought about that. He wanted to build uh, gardens on the River Thames, I think it is. Um, wish, like building the actual, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, garden on, on the bridge. He wants to build a bridge to Scotland to Nor Northern Ireland. Uh, Boris Johnson does. And, uh, yeah, imagine building a bridge to Norway to England. That'd be quite funny. But anyway, I'm going to play the video and show you guys what you think about the video. And drop drop a like and uh, drop a comment and uh, tell your friends about it. And what else can I say? Two seconds, guys. I'm just going to try and start the video. One, one second. Let's put the phone down for a minute because we're going to do one thing at once. Let's play the video. He championed the ill fated garden bridge across the River Thames, a bridge between England and France. And now we can reveal Boris Johnson is forging ahead with plans for another bridge, this time linking Scotland and Northern Ireland. In his campaign for the Conservative leadership, the Prime Minister waxed lyrical about a bridge linking the two parts of the UK at risk of being torn asunder by Brexit. Many didn't take him seriously. But we've now seen documents being circulated around government showing that Number 10 are exploring the project with some urgency, asking the Treasury and the Transport Department for advice. Both departments are being asked for their views on a feasibility study, an estimation of cost and where this money would come from, and the risks around the project, i.e. World War II munitions in the Irish Sea. The documents reveal the Department for Transport helpfully provided us with a factual paper on this subject after conversations between the DUP, the Conservatives' allies in Westminster, and former Secretary of State Cook can therefore build on that original paper. Boris Johnson met his Westminster ally, the DUP leader, the DUP believes a bridge could break the Brexit logjam by removing the need for a border in the Irish Sea. But the opposition warns the Prime Minister's enthusiasm for big infrastructure projects could end up wasting public money. One retired engineer said that given the prevalence of unexploded World War II ordnance, no sane contractor or government would carry out the project, and that it was about as feasible as building a bridge to the moon. This is yet another stunt from Boris Johnson, the man who tried to build a bridge from one side of the Thames to the other and failed quite spectacularly, is now thinking that he can do it from Scotland to Northern Ireland. It's ridiculous. It's also the wrong way to be going about doing politics at the moment. If he really cares about links between Northern Ireland and the rest of Great Britain, then he should be caring about the economic, constitutional and legal links that he's put by pursuing a no-deal Brexit. An architect told us, though, that those fears were unfounded. Well, there, there, are, there is always naysayers everywhere. Uh, and uh, my answer to them is that we should carry out this feasibility study and, uh, and to show that Britain and the UK has the capability and the wherewithal and the ingenuity to carry out such a, a tremendous, possible tremendous engineering project which would have worldwide recognition. So there are always naysayers, and there are always people that say, well, we can't afford it. But such a project could be potentially tremendous for the, for the country and shows as a, a forward-looking and, and thinking country. Boris Johnson has castigated anti-Brexit doomsters and doomsters, and during the leadership contest defended the Celtic Bridge, despite a potential price tag of 15 billion or more. I'm an enthusiast. For that idea. I'm going to put it out. I, 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 I'm an enthusiast for that idea. I think it's a good idea. With, with infrastructure projects, finance is, is not the issue. Uh, or, or not, the issue is political will. The issue is getting people, getting the business community uh, to see that this could be something that works for them. The issue is getting popular demand and popular consent for a great infrastructure project. And that is why you need Stormont. A bold plan to boost business or a bridge too far. Number 10 told us tonight they were looking at a variety of projects to bolster.
was night, uh, Downing Street gave us a statement which said that government regularly commissions work to examine the feasibility of projects. During the leadership campaign, candidates spoke about a number of issues which resulted in number 10 commissions ahead of a new prime minister taking over. This prime minister has made no secret of his support for infrastructure projects that increase connectivity for people and particularly those that strengthen the union. Well, they may be discussing it in number 10, but is the idea of a bridge with Northern Ireland given serious consideration in Scotland? Kieran Jenkins is in Port Patrick on Scotland's southwest coast. Kieran. Well, basically, Cathy, if you keep going in that general direction, 30 miles across a very deep and choppy Irish Sea, you get Northern Ireland. Now, a bridge linking Scotland and Northern Ireland has been mooted before, and it's been given short shrift before. For some, it solves a problem that simply doesn't exist. If you go down the road here, you can hop on a ferry to Northern Ireland. And others point out the monumental technical challenges of putting a bridge to Northern Ireland in these waters. But there are engineers who will tell you it is possible if you are prepared to spend an eye-watering amount of time and money. And bear in mind, this is a government currently wavering over HS2. Is it seriously going to throw billions and billions of pounds, chuck it into the Irish Sea here? And then there's the politics, which you can't strip away from the opposition. This idea has long been championed by the DUP, important Brexit allies of the former and current Prime Minister. And as we learned in those leaked emails, the DUP and UK governments have been talking about this idea this year. Now, a senior source at the Scottish government tells me, to their knowledge, they were not included in those discussions, and they would absolutely expect to be. And they say if this is about Brexit, well, then it solves nothing, because if you avoid a hard border in the Irish Sea, it'd essentially be nudging the problem 30 miles along some very expensive tarmac. Kieran, thanks very much. Well, earlier I spoke to the Scottish National Party MP, Hannah Bardell, and I began by asking her if she thought the bridge was a good idea. This project has merits and is worth consideration, and we will always look in Scotland as to how we can build relationships with other countries and, of course, Ireland. But it's very important that any project doesn't get caught up in the catastrophic brand that Boris has. And he, you know, is somewhat... a uh, hypocritical, I think, and it seems somewhat ironic that this is a Prime Minister talking about building bridges when all he can do is burn them. So it sounds a bit like you would give him your backing if he let you build it. I can't speak uh, for the details of this. I think that that would have to be looked at, but I think it's very, very important. Damage that has been done and is being done by Boris to Scotland and to Ireland can't just be uh, made up by building it's much deeper than that. Boris is doing, and his government and his advisors are doing everything they can, from what I can see and from what the rest of us can see, to derail democracy. And, you know, I wouldn't frankly trust them to build a Lego bridge. Your leader, Ian Blackford, uh, said that Boris Johnson was acting like a dictator. Dictators don't generally give people or want to give people a say in a general election, which is what Boris Johnson says he wants to do. And you've blocked that twice now. I'm afraid when you have got a government and a prime minister that is riding roughshod over the democratic institutions, uh, trying to ignore the legislature, um, that is a very, very serious matter. And to me, you know, he is governing like a, a, a despot dictator. That is rather overriding it, isn't it? And isn't that going to inflame opinion when you do come to an election? It's going to be a very grubby one, isn't it? I mean, I think we all seek to have a decent discourse, and I don't use that language lightly, nor did the First Minister. How would your First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, um, get along with Jeremy Corbyn if you end up holding the balance of power and the two of them are in government together? And we have said that we will work with others, we will work progressively across Parliament, uh, and I think we will do everything we can uh, to work with others to make sure that Scotland's interests are represented at Westminster for as long as we are there. If the Brexit chaos shows anything, it's how important it is for Scotland to be an independent country, to be able to have its voice heard, and to be able to stand on the global stage and not have its reputation damaged by the reckless nature and the reckless actions of Boris and the Conservative government. Anna Bardell, thank you very much. Well, guys, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. And uh, tell your friends about it, what I've 
shown you on the video and the uh, good ideas of building a bridge to Scotland and Northern Ireland, Boris Johnson's wishes on the building a garden on the Thames and many things of London and building a bridge to France to England. Imagine that, you know, <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me. See you in the next one. Take it easy guys. Peace. Good night.